Welcome to the Inbox segment, part five. This morning, I'm on the move to a Radio Club junk sale. We'll answer various questions on things like regenerative receivers, skid poles, double sideband, magnetic loops, and more. So keep listening. First off the rank is Aid Larson, who asks, who supplies heavy duty skid poles? Well, I've always used fairly light poles, and they came from Haverfords in Sydney, which supplies to the fishing market. Their cost of postage was reasonable within Australia, but I don't know if they deliver overseas. There are some poles that are heavier duty, I think they're around 17 metres long, and they cost quite a bit more. There's a good video by Dave VK3ASE on that on YouTube. Farm 39 Studio wanted to know if I'd ever used horizontal polarisation on a delta loop. I've tried it ages ago when operating from a park. I worked some DX, but the results were nothing special. More recently, being near the beach, I've always used it in vertical polarisation, and the results have been outstanding. MNPD3 reckoned there is no such thing as a simple regenerative receiver. He thought that most builders would never get it to work, and would be plagued with hand capacitance. A few people think that. If you follow solder smoke, you'll recall that Bill always thought that regen receivers were possessed by the devil. But lately, he's had a bit of an epiphany. He's actually built some regen receivers that work outstandingly well, and they've been a lot of fun. I'd suggest you have another think. Build a few simple regens, preferably as mechanically stable as possible. Start on the AM broadcast band, and you'll be surprised at the stations you get, especially at night. You might even pick up signals from interstate, or if you live in some of the smaller countries, overseas. It's certainly a very simple receiver, and for two or three transistors, the regen is probably the best you can do. One person who wasn't deterred by regens was Polka3, and he wants plans for a simple regen receiver. There's many on the net. Google Charles Kitchen, N1TEV. He's had several designs, transistor and FET. I would suggest building his FET version with the RF preamp. He describes it as a high performance regenerative receiver, and I've certainly had great results with it. Still on simple receivers, there were a few comments on the ZN414 MK484, and there is a reminder that the TA7642 is a similar chip that will also work. Since doing that 1000 hour receiver video, I tried the MK484 on 3.5 MHz. I could receive amateur signals, but the sensitivity was quite low. Perhaps a bit more audio or RF gain was required. I used a BFO and that was able to receive SSB signals, although they were very faint and would only have been readable had they been right close by. If you had RF or AF amplification, then it should work quite well and be a simple amateur bands receiver for 160 and 80 metres. My one valve 12 volt regen receiver continued to be popular. That was the one that used a 12AU7 and covered the AM broadcast band and a couple of shortwave frequencies as well. Bobby Wolf wanted plans. Have a look at the Cool386 website. There is a link from my description. On to Pedestrian Mobile and Colin VK2JCC asks, how did I hold a squid pole in a backpack? Yep, if you just put a squid pole in a backpack, it would normally slop around. To prevent that, I used a chopping board and a couple of U-bolts. You can't tighten them too tightly, otherwise you'll damage the pole. But if you have them firmly fitted, then you'll be able to hold the squid pole vertically against the chopping board. You then slip the chopping board in the backpack and the result is a reasonably rigid vertical antenna. You might even want to economise on weight by having the squid pole and making a brace so it fits on your back without the backpack or the chopping board. I haven't tried that however. Further to pedestrian mobile, M0DAD asked about Northeast UK and whether I've worked stations up there. I confess I've been a bit slack about logging and plotting the locations of the DX stations I work. But it seems to be roughly even in Europe. There doesn't seem to be a consistent pattern of working European countries. They seem to be reasonably evenly distributed. Still on pedestrian mobile, Giovanni asks, 
why not a seat and a wire in the water rather than standing and walking along. To do that you need to bring your own seat. Sure you can get light plastic or foldable seats but it's a bit of a bother doing that. If you do sit on the beach and you have the wire stretching across the sand then dogs and people trip over the wire so it's a hazard. And I don't think it will work as well as being directly over the water. So no, especially with summer coming up, I'll stick to my standing and wading in the water. Also from Giovanni, he asked about a 40 metre simple SSB rig. One that had good frequency coverage and reasonable output power, like 5 watts. I would suggest the OzQRP kit. I did a review when it first came out and the results are excellent. Have a look at a previous YouTube video. As well as 40 meters, there are also versions for 80 and 20. MK1 Tina wanted to know what camera I'm using. It's a Canon Legria FS21. As for the software, it's Microsoft Windows Movie Maker. However, today, because I'm in a heavy vehicle, I'm using an external microphone plugging into the camera. It's actually just a cheap mic that came from an old tape recorder. I remove the old element and put in an electrode insert. On to another favourite topic and magnetic loops. Yep, safety is a concern. There's EMR concerns, you don't want to be too close to a loop, especially if you're using 100 watts. With that sort of power, I would definitely have the loop outside and somewhere where no one can reach it. Voltages on the magnetic loop can be high. There's also the possibility of interference as well if you have the loop inside. If you look at the text comments on that video, you'll find a warning on all those concerned. Lyle Flavel wanted a user guide on the Digitech shortwave radio I reviewed. Can't help you there because I've sold the radio. But a lot of those radios, made in China, go under different brands. So what I would suggest is take a screenshot of the photo of the radio in that video and have a search on the web for shortwave radio and try and find a radio that looks just like mine or the one I used to have. Then when you do that, get a few model numbers and then do a search under instruction manuals. Hopefully you'll find something. Converting a bit X20 to a bit X40. A good idea because I find 40 meters a great band for portable QRP. There are a few things you'll need to change. You might want to use a different VFO and a different crystal filter frequency. Also, your tuned circuits will be different, both on the output Pi network and also any interstage tuned circuits. It's a really good topic, worth a separate video. That ends the inbox segment part five. Hope you enjoyed the drive, which was Springvale Road in Melbourne's southern suburbs. If you want to leave a comment, do so under this and future videos. I'll endeavour to answer your questions in a future inbox segment.